Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to another edition of The Soda Jerk. As always, I'm your host, Jimbo. Today we've got something very special that was sent to me by one of my fellow YouTubers out there, Mr. Jack the Ripper 2829 um, Jack the Ripper was kind enough to send me an email a few weeks back saying he was a fan of The Soda Jerk, and he asked me if I've ever heard of something called Dublin Dr. Pepper. And at the time, I was thinking, you know, what, is it like Irish Dr. Pepper or something? Apparently not. Um, it, the name Dublin Dr. Pepper was given to it because that's where it's made. It's made in Dublin, Texas, um, at a Dr. Pepper plant that actually is the oldest bottler of Dr. Pepper in the entire United States. Um, they've been bottling Dr. Pepper consistently since 1891, which is actually only six years after Dr. Pepper was created. Um, he sent me a little bit of, a, of history on the, uh, the Dr. Pepper brand as well as the, um, the Dublin plant, so I'll go over this with you a little bit here. Okay, Dr. Pepper itself, as it turns out, he's a native Texan. I didn't know that. Um, it originated at a place called Morrison's Old Corner Drugstore, and it was created by a pharmacist there named Charles Alderton. Now, when he wasn't um, busy doing his pharmacy duties, um, one of the things he liked to do was serve soda. He was a soda jerk. Um, now, for those of you not familiar with the term soda jerk and where I got the name uh, for this uh, series of videos that I do, allow me to elaborate. Basically, a soda jerk way back when, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, was a person that worked at a drug sla drugstore slash pharmacy that served soda. And when I say served soda, I'm not talking about like he hands a bottle to kids. No. Back then, there was no bottled soda, at least not on a national level or in most places, not even on a local level. Um, if you wanted to get a soda, you had to go to the drugstore slash pharmacy and have the soda jerk make you one because it was known as a fountain drink. And basically what that involved was a combination of things. The, the key ingredient in all sodas obviously is carbonated water, but they would mix everything from different fruit syrups to fruits to different creams and things like that. And sodas were basically only at the local level because they were basically, these soda drinks were more or less like bartenders for children. And what I mean by that is, you know, they would put all the ingredients together and they would make the concoction their way. So even if they got the recipe from someone else, you know, a different soda jerk or a different store, a different town, a different city, whatever, they would still put their own kind of little spin on it. So since there was no kind of standard for sodas, again, there was no, you know, bottled Coke, no bottled Pepsi, none of that. This is before all that existed. This was basically the genesis of soda pop. And um, this guy, um, Charles Alderton, he basically, just in working at the pharmacy, he kind of became infatuated with the smells of the pharmacy, like the different fruit syrups and stuff that they would use at the soda fountain, and he decided to create a soft drink that tasted like that, which is kind of a cool idea. So after a lot of trial and error, you know, mixing different syrups and different concoctions and proportions and things like that, he finally hit upon a mixture that caught his fancy, and he turned it over to the owner, Mr. Morrison, to give it a test, to give it a test run and see if he likes it. Apparently he went gaga for it, and they eventually started um, letting their local constituents try it, and they went crazy for it too. And the kicker was, back then, back when, they, when this whole thing began, the soda itself didn't have a name. So the locals actually started calling it a Waco, since it was created in Waco, Texas. Um, the Waco, Texas, uh, for all you Americans out there, you might remember that that was the, the uh, now infamous site of the Branch Davidian slash David Koresh incident. That kind of sucks. That's not exactly a finer point in American history, but it is kind of cool that something awesome came out of Waco, Texas, too. So good stuff. So basically, these kids would come into the pharmacy and they'd be like, yo, give me a Waco. You know, that's pretty cool. So, okay. So as far as the, the name Dr. Pepper, as far as where it came from, the um, owner of the drugstore, Mr. Morrison, is apparently credited for coming up with the name Dr. Pepper. There's a lot of different stories as far as where he came up with the name, but the most common one is that he named it after a friend of his who was named Dr. Charles Pepper. Which, I can believe that. You know, the dude's his friend, and he's like, you know, I'm going to name my soon-to-be world-famous, drank the world over soda after you. Hey, cool. Only in America, right? Okay, so basically, um, Morrison and Charles Alderton started producing this stuff and it became popular. Then eventually, um, some of the surrounding pharmacies in Waco and eventually all of Texas heard about this and they were getting orders for it and they would, would eventually buy the syrup from Morrison's drugstore. And it got to the point where the demand for this stuff was so high that they could not keep up with it and run the store at the same time. 
So eventually they basically sold their stock um, to a firm called the Artisan Manufacturing and Bottling Company, which later became the Dr. Pepper Company. And in 1904, at the World's Fair, um, Dr. Pepper was introduced to almost 20 million people. Now for those of you not familiar with what the World's Fair was back then, it was kind of like E3 and Comic Con put together into one thing. It was like this huge spectacle where all of the greatest new innovations and in technology and food and everything was unveiled all at once. I mean this was like, this was the place to be back in the early 1900s. I mean this was gaga stuff. So. Basically, 20 million people attended the 1904 World's Fair, and along with Dr. Pepper being introduced to the world, several other what, will, what I would definitely call American traditions, American hallmarks, things that were known for here, were introduced at that same World's Fair. Those being the hamburger, actually on a bun, frankfurters, also known as hot dogs, and ice cream on a cone. How awesome was that, man? 1904, the World's Fair. Dr. Pepper, hamburgers, hot dogs, and ice cream on a cone. Only in America, folks. That's freaking awesome. That's the cat's ass right there. So, let's take a look at the bottle here. Okay, I have never seen this type of bottle before, but... So you can see, it's Dr. Pepper in an 8-ounce bottle. This is the same size as what's referred to as a baby Coke. Um, but the kicker here is right on the label. says, made with imperial sugar. So apparently this plant in Dublin, like I said, they've been making Dr. Pepper ever since pretty much Dr. Pepper was Dr. Pepper. And for that entire time, even through the saturation and the transition to high fructose corn syrup in the 1980s, these guys have still been making this same bottle of Dr. Pepper with the imperial sugar the entire time. So even though the rest of the Dr. Pepper plants were making you know, what, what's now known as the standard formula with high fructose corn syrup and artificial sweeteners and all kinds of stuff. These guys have been keeping it real for over a century. I love America. That's freaking awesome. So, without further ado, what do you say we crack this sucker open? We'll see what's what. Cheers. Well, goddamn, if that isn't the best damn Dr. Pepper I've ever had in my entire life. Whew. Wow. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, folks. Those commercials on television from the corn industry saying that your brain can't tell the difference between corn sugar and cane sugar, they're full of shit. I can tell the difference immediately. Corn syrup does not taste like this. This tastes like real sugar. And I gotta tell you, real sugar is awesome. Let's get another pull, huh? Oh my god, is that smooth. I mean, that's like, it's like Dr. Pepper on steroids or something. I mean, that's, god, that's good. I, I want to move to Texas now or something. I mean, dude, that's just, okay, if you're ever in Dublin, Texas, stop by the plant or the, the place where this stuff is made, get some of this stuff. If you're a fan of Dr. Pepper, you're going to love this, man. I'm not even, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not a huge Dr. Pepper fan. I don't dislike it. There's just a lot of things that I would get before it, like a cola or a root beer or something. But this is damn good. I don't think I can ever have a regular Dr. Pepper again. Now I'm spoiled. So, Jack the Ripper 2829, I think you and I are going to have to work out some kind of barter system or something, man, because you're now my enabler. Well, thanks everyone so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, cheers. Trust me, I'm a doctor. <clears throat>